Well, okay, so I'm Austin Meyer, and I wrote X Plane. Mm -hmm. um, now I, I have not written all of X Plane as you know it today, mm -hmm. because I have a small staff of people yeah. that have made huge contributions, and the contributions being made by my staff mm -hmm. are now greater than the code that I've written myself in X Plane. Okay. So I am no longer the only author. Mm -hmm. However, when I first started off, up through about X Plane Six or X Plane Seven, mm -hmm. I wrote all of all of X Plane. And I started it um, back in 1993, more or less, maybe 1992, yeah. because I just was not completely happy with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay. Um, since I wasn't happy with Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I knew that Microsoft would not change their simulator just mm. because I wanted them to, yeah. I decided to go on ahead and start writing my own simulator. Okay. And um, as I was writing it for my own use, only for my own private use, I soon began to see that it was a pretty good simulator that other people might be able to enjoy. And then right around 1995, maybe 1996, I started selling it. Um, and other people, from that point on, other people began to see that it is possible to have another mm. flight simulation product okay. than Microsoft. Yeah. When it was running on the Macintosh, you remember the little Macintoshes that were the, this the big that you could carry on a motorcycle, mm -hmm. yeah. carrying it by the yeah. handle? Yeah. Um, I flew Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator on that uh, kind of Macintosh okay. for a little while. Okay. And uh, that was where I saw that it would be possible to, to have more flexibility in the simulator so it could do more different things. Yeah got about, oh, I don't know, 2,000, maybe 3,000 hours. Okay. And living in the United States, uh, flying light airplanes is a little bit more common mm. than in Europe. Yeah. A larger percentage of the population mm. can do it. Because, of course, in the United States, it's a large area mm. with a lot of empty spaces mm. and fewer people. Yeah. So you have a larger area, fewer people, more empty space in between. Mm. Uh, the environment is a little bit more conducive mm. to flying your own airplane. Uh -huh. And our fuel is a little bit less expensive. Mm. Um, and our government has a little bit, little bit less restriction, yeah. less regulation. Yeah. I mean, yeah. mostly when I fly, I don't have to talk to any government agency or file any flight plan. Yeah. I can just hop in the airplane and go. And go. So okay. it's, it's, the United States is a good environment to learn how to fly light airplanes okay. and to enjoy flying light airplanes. Yeah. Well, it, I'm in the middle of a transition right now. Mm. My current airplane that I fly is called a Columbia 400. Yeah. Single engine, propeller, mm. made out of uh, fiberglass, okay. mostly composite materials, 310 horsepower, okay. certified by the Federal Aviation Administration to be safe and easy to fly. Mm. So the Columbia 400 was basically designed by a company of people, uh, a boardroom full of executives, yeah. approved by investors, and ultimately approved by the government to be safe, uh, affordable, and a good airplane to fly. Okay. That's what I currently fly, and it has become incredibly boring. Okay. <laughs> because it's only 310 horsepower. It's less power than most cars, most sports cars these days, anyway. Uh, well, and, maybe in the United States. Yeah, okay, in the United States. Yeah, in the United States. Um, and so I have just finished building a home-built airplane called okay. a Lancer Evolution. Yeah. This has not been approved by any investor, government, boardroom, or anything. Yeah. It's just a couple people that came up with what they believe is the best design, mm -hmm. and each individual builds the airplane himself, yeah. although I got a lot of help. Okay. got a lot of help from a team of, yeah. of, pe of people. Mm -hmm. But uh, myself and a team of people, we built this airplane, yeah. and because it's a home-built airplane built by me and yeah. a group of helpers, it's free from any government uh, regulation or restriction at all, so it is not certified. But rather than having 310 horsepower, mm -hmm. it has 850. All right. So <laughs> and it will go, we have now had it up to 370 miles an hour. Okay. This is a single engine propeller mm -hmm. that will almost run with a business jet in okay. speed. So this is what happens when you do a home-built airplane mm -hmm. with almost no restrictions on what yeah. you can do. So it's a fascinating airplane. The safety is a little bit unknown uh, <laughs> right now uh, because there's okay. only a few of them flying. Maybe mm -hmm. six or seven or eight of them are flying yeah. so far. Okay. So this is a kind of a new technology. Um, and the idea is now that with the government removed from the picture, you can design and build an airplane that's as incredible as you can dream. Okay. And uh, the Lancer Evolution is kind of an experiment in that sense. 
of right. an airplane. Okay. When home built airplane rules were first designed, mm -hmm. it was so people could take a little, like a lawnmower with wings and mm -hmm. kind of, you know, kind of limp around the sky with a little Rotax engine, a little chainsaw or go kart mm -hmm. engine driving a little ultralight. Yeah. The idea was that you can just build your own airplane, a simple little wood airplane or simple aluminum construction or simple fabric construction mm -hmm. and be free from the regulations since after all you're only flying a, a simple little uh, wooden airplane yeah. but people have then asked the question how far can we go with this mm -hmm. and the Lancer Revolution now is leaving almost all certified airplanes behind in performance okay. so home built airplanes are really really starting to leave the certified airplanes okay. behind which is an exciting industry to be in right now Well, okay, so first of all, let me start with the most basic point I can make, mm -hmm. which is that in the simulator, it is only fun and useful mm. for me to fly in the simulator mm. if the simulator flies like the real airplane. Mm -hmm. And that for me is kind of a starting point for all discussions in flight simulation. Yeah. If the flight simulator is fun and useful to me, the simulator must fly like the real airplane. Oh. Now, let's back up a step and ask, okay, now that we understand that, how do we implement that in the simulator? Mm -hmm. Well, with Microsoft Flight Simulator, mm -hmm. they imitated the known performance of existing airplanes. Okay. For example, they would say, oh, this is a Cessna 172. It must climb at this speed, and it must go this fast. Mm -hmm. With some basic rules, they managed to imitate the flight of a real airplane with mm -hmm. some degree of accuracy. Mm -hmm. But whenever you get into unusual situations, stalls, spins, touching down on the runway sideways, touching down down on the runway hitting a wingtip first, um, having the engine fail or a propeller blade come off. Mm. Um, when you get into all the unusual things that can really happen in flying, mm -hmm. the imitation flight model just doesn't work that well yeah. because the imitation didn't foresee all of these unusual things that could happen mm -hmm. in the real world. Yeah. So what X-Plane does is something that is completely different. When you design an aircraft in X-Plane, mm -hmm. you do not tell X-Plane how the airplane is supposed to fly. Mm -hmm. You only enter the shape of the airplane, the geometry, the engine horsepower, mm -hmm. the weight, yeah. the things that define the, the physical existence of the airplane. Mm -hmm. X-Plane will then interact that model with the air mm -hmm. to predict how the airplane will actually fly. And it does this by breaking the airplane down into many little pieces or elements mm -hmm. and finding the forces on each of those elements mm -hmm. then adding up all those forces to get the total forces and rotational moments on the airplane yeah. so it's much more of an engineering approach that predicts how an airplane will fly okay. and this is interesting for a few reasons one anybody that has a design for what they think would be the perfect airplane mm -hmm. they can put it into x-plane and find out they can try yeah. two you really learn something every time you fly X-Plane mm -hmm. because it's showing you what it thinks a real airplane will do, not just what you just hold it. Okay. Um, and three, when you get into the unusual scenarios, for example, an engine failure in a twin engine airplane mm -hmm. or a control system not working, the failure of an aileron or an elevator, a control mm -hmm. system on the airplane, um, the physics are still just as accurate. And so you get to see what the airplane will really do if one of the ailerons quits working or one of the engines quits working yeah. or an elevator separates. The physics remain just as accurate in that case mm -hmm. as they are in flying in a perfectly life. functioning airplane. Yeah. And so you get a response to failures in the airplane that is completely, hopefully, realistic. Mm -hmm unlike where you might just be imitating you for example if you were doing microsoft flight sim you might, you might say oh well if one engine fails we'll reduce the climb rate by yeah. a certain amount well mm -hmm. the amount the climb rate is going to reduce is going to depend on how the airplane is flown yeah. and the weight and the temperature and you know the altitude right. um for example in a twin engine airplane let's look at something like say a beach baron mm -hmm. two yeah. propellers yes okay you have two wings two engines and the propellers are both spinning and they're blowing air over the wing yeah also, they are blowing air over the horizontal stabilizer. Yeah. Let's say this engine fails, mm -hmm. okay? What many people will say is, oh, now you have half the thrust. Mm -hmm. well, it's more complicated than that, isn't it? Yeah. Because all of your thrust is coming from this side. This wants to twist you over to the right. Not only that, but this propeller is now absorbing energy from the airflow. Mm -hmm. It's not putting energy into the airflow, it's pulling energy out of the air. In other words, the air as it comes up to the propeller is being slowed down yeah. by the windmilling propeller. What does this mean? It means air is moving more slowly 
over part of the wing. Mm -hmm. This means you're also losing lift on this side of the airplane. Mm -hmm. You're losing lift because there's less airspeed over the wing because mm -hmm. the air is being hidden from the wing by the propeller. Mm -hmm. And that air string goes all the way back to the horizontal stabilizer. Mm -hmm. That means you also lose some effectiveness of the elevator. Yeah. The elevator is less effective because mm -hmm. there's less speed going over the horizontal stabilizer because the propeller is acting as a big air brake, absorbing yeah. that energy just to pump air through a six-cylinder engine that's mm -hmm. now not producing any power. Yeah. As well, the propeller is actually slowing that side of the airplane down mm -hmm because it's acting like a big windmill or an air mm. brake. All of these things happen when you fail the engine. And then if you start to get the nose to, to one side or the other, mm -hmm. the upwind wing now has air striking it from underneath yeah. more than the downwind mm -hmm. wing because of the dihedral of the airplane and the side slip. Yeah. And so all of these things conspire <laughs> to cause the airplane to lose lift, mm -hmm. lose authority, yaw, stall, and spin into mm -hmm. the ground. This kills real people in Beach Barrens. Yeah. It's not going to be properly simulated in any flight simulator mm -hmm. unless you do what X-Plane does, which is break the airplane into many little pieces and find the force on each piece and find the interactions between all these pieces. Mm -hmm. That's what X-Plane does. That's the way to really make a flight model accurate, mm -hmm. and that's what a real airplane does as well.